Welcome back, Roasties. We are here for Let It Ride, round 21 of the NRL season. As always, joined by my nasally friend, Hemi Goodman. How are you? A little bit, oh. uh, a little bit, uh, a bit uh, yeah. blocked up there, mate. Bit, How are you? I'm a bit Jared, Jared Croker, for those playing <laughs> home this morning. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I've done a rat. It's not COVID. Uh, might just be a bit of Darwin Cup fever. I was going to say. A couple of big, di- couple yeah, of big days, big days up there. Up there. Yeah, it was a few big days. Uh, I was actually pretty well behaved compared to a lot of the others. I, I had a few bits and pieces I had to get done work-wise over the weekend. So there were some big, big nudges from some some members of the sports vet team. We're talking almost – there was a couple – there was a 5 a.m. I think in there as well. Uh, not for me, though. I, I, I think my latest night, night would have been about midnight or, or a fraction after. So whatever it is, it's, it's caught up with me now. But uh, it's good to be good to be back here in um, at Goodman HQ. <laughs> I uh, saw you were what feeding the crocs. You were out. Um, yes, you were out, you, I don't think you were swimming with them, but you were uh, out there doing a bit of Titanic with uh, good old Rambo. Yes. Well, there, there's actually a video coming. I did have to get in a cage with some crocs at, a, at like the croc museum up there. So I didn't enjoy it very much, but hopefully, uh, watching me suffering my jocks or suffering my <laughs> budgies for sixty seconds or thereabouts to give some people at home a good laugh, but that'll was be coming it, up in sc- the next few days. Was it scary as shit? I, I don't think I could it was, do it. I mean, you, you, you definitely, like, you're in this uh, big kind of tube, uh, I guess, rather than a cage. And I don't think they'd be able to really get in. But regardless, you're in their little pen and they're snapping up at you and, and knocking the cage around. So I didn't cope very well. But uh, it was pretty amazing, pretty amazing. My first time to Darwin, I'm going to say the highlight for me in Darwin was there's a shop up there called the Rugby Shop. <laughs> and the Rugby Shop is on... Smith Street in Darwin, go and say good day to them. Incredible range of rugby, mainly rugby union, but they they got some rugby league stuff in there as well. But they got a they got a chalkboard out the front, and every day they put a, a, a new joke on the chalkboard. So oh, I was r- right in of, your wheelhouse. Yep. Yeah, I'm not going to bore you with all the jokes that we saw while we're up there. I'll, I'll give you the the best one that I saw off the chalkboard while we're up there in Darwin, and uh, that was. I just don't know how a cemetery can raise burial prices and blame it on the cost of living. <laughs> <laughs> that you wrote so, that one. That you you submitted that one to them, didn't you? To the rugby shop. Yep. Get around them on Smith Street up there. Big fan of your work. So uh, go and give me pay me a visit if you're up there in, in Darwin. I uh I told my uh, I got some family over at the moment. I told them the pelican joke um the other day. Now we're not gonna I'm not gonna give that away for free. Don't, here. No, don't waste it here. No, nah, um, no. but if you're if you're a fan of the show, maybe we might release it a uh, grand final week. So um, stay tuned because it is a it's a cracker. Um, you know what the pelican joke would be perfect for? If we had set up like Patreon and the the Patreon only episode. Yeah, I would do the the, the pelican joke. So. Maybe we'll just sit on that one for a little bit. We've uh, talked it up. It. We've yeah, talked it's it very, up, but it's, it's, it's a very, it's a very good joke. When you have, when you have uh, Pat, uh, our mate Pat Garshagan, who uh, when when you told it to him, went around and told almost every table at the MCG. Um, yeah, uh, he and laughing before he even got out the punchline. Um, yeah, you know it's you know it's a cracker. It's just it's it's good. It can catch the best the best way to do it is to catch people off guard. So don't sort of telegraph that it's coming. But yes. Uh, yeah, it's a ripper. So we'll, we'll find a way of releasing that somehow. But probably, probably if we can make a bit of cash out of it, that's the best way to do it. Roast here, hundred percent. Now I, I want to start off just by um, a little bit of an apology to uh, everyone. I went back and had a listen to the last episode just to get some uh, results and things, and I listened to myself saying "ah" and "um" about a thousand times a sentence. Uh, so for those uh, listening. I seriously, I do hate public speaking, which is ironic considering I have uh, a couple of podcasts that I that I run through the page. But uh, if you listen to it, I apologise, and I'll try and be better. I'll try and get uh, much better. But uh, talking about my other podcast as well, uh, if you love wrestling and footy, we have a uh, podcast dropping tomorrow. We, we've dropped a few episodes, but it, next episode drops tomorrow. League World Order uh, mixes wrestling and footy, so. Jump on, subscribe to that one. Uh, me and Curtis Woodward jump on and talk about all things wrestling and all things footy. So have a listen to that. Uh, but the weekend's tips, Hemi, uh, how did you go last week? Look, I know 
I, I had a reasonable week with. I, I think my highlight was was the Eels at three twenty five. They absolutely that was good. The, I, the Panthers. I was talking that one up in Darwin. I said for all the Let It Ride listeners, Roasty picked this one uh, like a dirty nose. Uh, you, you absolutely nailed it. Uh, and and even first... even before, sorry, even before like Nathan Cleary was sent sent off, they were they were looking really good. And yep. you know him getting sent off obviously helped Parramatta keep you know, keep the momentum and, and win the game. But I think they would have won regardless. They, they were on that night. Yeah. Look, I, I'm just having a quick flick through here, Rosie. I don't think I went that well. I had it Johnson any time, but that's, you know, that that's to be expected, really. I had Nanai, uh, $2.75 as well. <clears throat> the Zingerbox multi went down, sadly, but, uh, yeah, playing, I don't I'm, think I had Do you know what? I've got, I've got it written down for later on, but I'll bring it up now. I'm blaming you because there's early crows and then there's a Hemi Goodman after one leg saying, texting me saying Zinger Multi with the eyes emoji. Like that's a way early crow. Well, I did it. I did it the previous week. I thought, why would I stray from a, a winning formula? So <laughs> anyway. Bl- blaming you on that one. I only got uh, the one leg out of that. So, but anyway. Well, I, don't, I don't know that I can be blamed on that. You can't blame me for being a. A dodgy puns, mate, but whatever helps, whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> mate, I've got to share a quick story. I had a, a Barry Crocker last week um, with – so for people that don't know, I you know, run the roast and I also run uh, a little business where I, I manage other people's um, businesses, Instagram, social media feeds as a social media manager, I suppose. And – Last week, I thought I would was logged out. I'd had to update some stuff. I thought I'd logged out, and I went to do some personal stuff and just went um, bang, pressed on the story and realized straight away, holy shit, I've posted this to the business account. And it was quite funny. It was me as a kid uh, dressed up in these dino clothes, and I said, you know, it tried to be real cool and say, rate my drip, had the uh, slider thing with the, with the fire emoji. Thought I was pretty cool. Shared it. And I, as soon as I posted on Instagram, I was like, holy shit, I, you know, I've got to delete this. I had to wait for it to upload, so I was right on it. As soon as I posted, delete. Thought I was safe. Went to the pub for a couple of hours. Thought all was sweet. Come back. All these messages in the work slack, things like that. And I'm like, holy shit, what have I done? Forgot that when you post the Instagram story, it automatically shares to Facebook. It had been up for like two Zuckerberg hours. Zuckerberg got ya. Zuck's got me. So here I yep. am in my, you know, kids' clothes uh, back, you know, 20 years ago and shared it up to this business account. Uh, they're wondering what the fuck's going on. Uh, but luckily, yeah. uh, a friend of ours, a uh, mutual friend, he um, now actually works at a rival company and he, he messaged me. Uh, I won't say names of the businesses or the people just to um, protect it a bit, but... Uh, shout out to him for, uh, for yeah. <laughs> but shout out to him for uh, uh, helping me out. But uh, very embarrassing. I was had my personal uh, story up on a business account for about two hours as a social media manager. If anyone is out there doing it, you know that's probably one of the worst things you can do. It's yeah. one of the most embarrassing things. So had a Barry Crocker, well, but we'll, we'll survive. Rosie, we'll get through. For what it's worth, your drip was fire, mate, and I, I voted accordingly. Uh, I, so I tell, tell you what, well when I did share it to my personal one, it did get a lot of uh, full fire, so I was pretty happy with it. Deservedly so, deservedly so. Mate, we've got a question of the week this week. Now, yep. I have to share a story uh, about a guy named Jack Johnson in the UK Super League playing in the championship over there. Uh, at training um, last week, a little bit of an accident, going up to make a tackle and got need. In the nether regions? Um, Yes. I'll I'll read it out to you. We were doing a defensive drill at training. I made a tackle, but as I've gone to put Noakes on his back, his knee came up and went straight into my testicle. I tried to get up, did another tackle, but then I walked off the ground, threw up three times on the pinch pitch. I went green. He goes, after an hour, I checked on my testes, and one of them was huge, like three to four times size of normal. It was like a tennis ball. That's when I drove myself to the hospital. Now, Anyone in this situation is not a laughing matter. If you if you've ever had a knee, even just a you know a light knock where it just you know knocks it, it hurts. Um, to yeah. have, a, have it actually rupture and he had to have it removed uh, is no laughing matter. But he was pretty good about it. The next day he's had an interview where I shared it up on the on the feed. If you want to go back and listen to the whole thing, but cracked a bit of a joke. He said uh, when he's talking, they end up moving and talking about the team. He said, "Oh, it's a bit of a testy time for us. We haven't been on the uh-huh. ball." Made a few of those puns, which was good. But 
He, one of the things he said was, oh, I end up losing my testicle, my left one, which was a shame because it was my favorite one. And it got me thinking, <laughs> do you have a favorite testicle, Hemi? Well, you, you posed this to me last night and you sent me a message and you said, look, I'm going to ask this question too. I got to ask you about, you know, which is your favorite testicle. And I said, well, I was trying to say, I'll sleep, <laughs> I'll sleep on my fave testicle. This is where autocorrect came to the party and it said, I'll sleep on my face testicle. <laughs> so that was a little bit embarrassing for me. Just a little bit. Uh, yeah. Um, and I had a shocking sleep for what it's worth. So don't do that. Don't sleep uh, on your face testicle. Don't do it. Um, look, I don't, it's a tough one. I haven't, I haven't spent too much time thinking about it. I mean, maybe, maybe it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm usually a right, right hand, right foot dominator. Maybe it's time to give, the other side of the body a bit of love so i might i might follow this bloke in it and say my left my left nut and you often hear people talking about you know betting their left nut or yep. you know all that sort of stuff so I'll, I'll stick with that what about yourself my mine's my right it's a big one um and i'm right-handed so it's the one i, I seem to go to more uh, more than often but i, I think <laughs> i'm like you i might have to i might have to share the love around yeah and for, I suppose, you know, all the women listeners out there, um, let us know what's your, your favourite breast. Is it left or right? Um, me? And to I, all the I'm, guys out there listening. I'm both. Um, let us know in the comments. Let us yes. know in the comments your favourite testicle. Let us know because it's it's um, important research that we need to know. Yeah, it is. But let's let's get on to some more important stuff, which is the football hammy. Yep. Thurs, Thursday night blockbuster. Um, starting the week off right, we have... Uh, the Roosters v Broncos, top eight clash here. Uh, Roosters yep. all trying to, you know, stay in that, uh, stay in the eight, and the Broncos trying to aim for a top four spot. Roosters minus four and a half, over forty three and a half. Now, last night, Paddy Carrigan handed a four match ban for his uh, yes. hip, hip drop tackle on um, Jacko Hastings, which should have um, got, should have got more. Yeah, look, um, you know, Jacko's going to miss what they reckon like three months could miss the World Cup. Everything so it's a bit of a bit of a shocking shocking injury. Who would he have played for there? England. Ah, uh, yep, yep, yep. So, right. um, and he's been in some great form. He w- he will be Very sadly missed for uh, England. Um, for Brisbane, Cobo's back in his first game since his concussion in Origin. So that's a, a huge in. Roosters, they're starting to fire for the finals. Uh, they're back out for the season. Uh, three straight wins while uh, the Broncos last start losers against your Tigers. Um, but they did win 10 from 12 before that. So keep that in mind. Bit of a bit of a kick up in the backside for the Bronx last week by the Tigers. Uh, do you see them falling again here, Hemi? Or do you see the Roosters getting one um, over the Broncos? I've got, I looked at this game and I went, this will be close. And you know what? I know it's the first game of the round, but stuff it. I'm going to use my try bet straight off the bat. I think this will be either side by six and a half or less. Yep. That'll get you about $2.75. The Chooks are pretty unconvincing against Manly for me. Uh, the Broncos, of course, outclassed by a Silky Tigers outfit roasty. So, Silky. Uh, well, what, a, what a team. I mean, there's no shame in losing to the Tigers. Don't worry about that. Uh, yes, they've seen Carrigan. Uh, they're a good team. I think they'll, they'll be a bit better this week. That said, I'm probably barracking for the Roosters in this one because... I've got them to finish top four in a multi with the Storm. So I need them to keep winning, but I think it'll be a nice close game. Try scorers, <clears throat> Joey Manu. He's looking for three weeks in a row, uh, $2.35 for him to score one. And I found this stat quite interesting. Corey Oates is a backs to the wall player this season. He's scored a double in the Broncos' last four games when they're starting as underdogs. Six marks Ooh, to get I a double. Love it. I love one. a niche stat like that. Yeah. That's good. I think, uh, you know, Paddy Carrigan out, he's he's a massive loss for the Broncos. He averages like 32 tackles, 143 run metres uh, per game. Uh, also, just to note the the weather. So uh, 80% chance of rain on Thursday night in Sydney. So keep that in mind because uh, if it rains, low scoring game. So just just uh, keep that. I, I love your try bet. Um, Broncos uh, won this game last year at the SEG by 13 plus. Uh, however, the Broncos, uh, the Roosters have won six from their last eight against the Broncos. I think the form of Teddy Manu, who went last week for over 200 meters, 13 tackle busts, he's a freak. Suwali as well, so much strike power there for the the Roosters. Uh, I have them taking the win here. 
I don't mind the four and a half, but I also love the try bet. Either team under six. I think I'm going to stick with you, Hemi. I'm going to I'm going to shift. I'm going to go either team under six. There, get around me. Yeah, get around you. Love, yeah. Uh, like I said, with that strike power, any of those backs could score for the Roosters. But if it's a wet game, I think it's going to be low scoring. So just keep an eye out that for that. For me, Angus Crichton, a little bit of value here. He's scored six tries in his last ten games against the Broncos. And he's 460 to do it again here. So I like that for a little bit of value. Like I said, any of those backs could score, but if it's wet, just look for those edges. I think they'll they'll push through. Um, Don't score. He doesn't score often. He's only scored one this year, but just got one of those feelings. So yeah, tight match for me. Yeah, bash and crash. Yeah, Yeah. I think we're going to have a a blockbuster. This is going to come down to the wire Thursday night. Kick us off right. And Angus Crichton to score for me. Lovely. Rolling into Friday, straight after work for most of us, we have Storm, yes. Storm v. Titans. Now, Storm minus 16 and a half. Overs is 44 and a half. Ugly, ugly scenes for the Titans this year. I don't say it getting much better with the Storm this week, mate. No. Uh, with uh, David Nofaluma starting yes. out wide for them. And a hungry, hungry cheese off the bench making his return. <laughs> uh, yep. No Olam, no Meany. And as a Tigers fan, I've got to ask you, Hammy, do you like the... The deals they've done with because uh, Gildart he went to the Roosters as well, uh, and you've got um, Nofa to the Storm. Do you like these well, look, end of year deals? No, I don't. But Nofa wasn't getting a start in first grade for whatever reason. He's a great player, absolute waste. Um, Got to be more to that, I reckon. But you look at other clubs. I think the Storm wanted out of car back. The Bulldogs said no. Like just speaks volumes of the Tigers a little bit. Yeah, just take him. Whatever. Like there's just no. I don't know, a little bit frustrating, a little bit annoying. That yeah, said, yeah. He's, a, he's, a, he's a great player. He's going to go whack. I've got him for two or more tries here. So uh, I've got that written down as well. I think, you know, it's massive. Yeah. He got a, what did he score? Five tries or something for Samoa not yeah. long ago in that test match. Kotrick got a double against the Titans last week as well. I think not for Luma gets two or more in this one. The line, 16 and a half. Yes, please. I'm taking the storm to cover that and not for Luma to go whack. Yeah. I, I, I thought um, Melbourne... Uh, they were lucky to have uh, Nass and, and Josh King out there this week. Uh, both their incidents were, were very ugly, and I, I thought they'd be suspended, but they've still got them there. Um, Wishart's making his second start at uh, at fullback, albeit against some easier opposition this time. Last time was Penrith, and he had a decent game, so it'd be interesting to see what happens there at, at fullback. Uh, I think, you know, this is the week Storms sort of find their mojo. I know they had the win last week, but it was, you know, against the Warriors, and they only won by, I think, 12 points. I think this is their Austin Powers, yeah, baby, game where they, uh-huh. they put on a big score at home and uh, I get, think that, so too. get that feeling back for the finals run. Storm 13-plus for me. Um, as for try score, like I said, you know, when, you, when you're a kid and you get a, a present for Christmas, you love just playing with the new toy, right? And David Nofaluma at the Storms, that brand new toy, and I think they'll just play with him all. That sounds really bad. But uh, uh-huh. they will play with him, I suppose, Uh um, all day, and yeah, I love the uh, two plus tries. I've got that. I think it's uh, three seventy. So for me, that's that's easy money. Um, yeah, I think you go big here. So Storm thirteen plus, uh, and Nofa two plus. Like it. Now talk about season season defining games. The second Friday oh, yeah. night game, Manly v Para. The Eels trying to keep in touch. With the top four, while Manly need to win to stay in line for a top eight spot, Lossie could see them two games out with four rounds to play. Not a spot you really want to be in. No. Nah. But they are favourites. Manly minus one and a half favourites here. Overs 42 and a half. Uh, Para have lost Moses for a month. Seagulls, welcome back. The Manly seven, well, at least the majority of them. Schuster has been kept on the bench, which is a huge call here from Desi. I'm at odds. I mean, a game I think Para probably you know, should win, uh, but a desperate Manly uh, scare me. Can we see Manly bounce back from last week's loss or Para continue their m- huge momentum from that Penrith win? Look, uh, they, that, they impressed me last week, Manly. Backs to the wall, a lot of blokes coming in who wouldn't have expected to probably be playing earlier in the week. Um, those, a lot of those guys are out now and the Manly seven are back. I wonder if that's actually a bit more disruptive, to be honest. I yeah. don't know. Apparently we'll they had to have see. a meeting as well during the week to say, you know what, you know what side they're on, like you know we're all in this together and all that. Yep. So interesting to see how that plays out. Well, I know that Manly have won three in the last four between these sides, uh, but the Eels have just pumped the Panthers. I was going to go Eels thirteen plus, but with no Moses, 
I'm just going to take him head to head. Uh, Sevo got a double last week. I think he'll get one in this game at a dollar ninety. So I think the Eels that this should be a good game. That you'd almost be looking into tribe and areas here, but uh, I reckon the Eels uh, are good enough to get it done. I. Yeah, I'm I'm taking the try bet this week. This was my pick for this one. Just too hard. I, I don't like picking either team here because like I said, I think Parra should win and I I don't mind their 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 value there as a as an underdog, but uh, I just think it's gonna be a close game. You know, could set, you know, two points, one one point, could even go to golden point. And I think that try bet's a little bit safer for me. I know, like I said, Manly have had a bit of a disruptive uh, couple of weeks. But this is sort of Desi's areas. He loves to play in this. He loves this, oh, they're all against us. And he and he has this insane ability to rally his team in moments like this. So be very careful with this one. Um, I've got Ruben Garrick. I've got him for a little special bet at the end of the show. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But I think him here, 235, he's scored six tries in his last three games against Power, and he's scored nine tries in total, in a total of seven games against them. So he's really good value there at 235. Uh, Isaiah Papali'i as well has been on a tear. Five tries in his last seven, 10 for the year in total. He's at 360. Uh, he's been kind of the show as well. So uh, I'm going to stick with the try bet. Six points or less at two seventy. If you you know want to go a little bit safer, eight points at two dollars and eight cents. That's another one. But yeah, Isaiah Papali'i and Ruben Garrick are my try scorers. Taking one from each team, just for a little I like bit. That. Of, yeah, sharing the love, roasty. Hundred percent. Now, yeah. In what feels like the perfect Saturday three pm game, we've got the Rabbits v Warriors. Uh, Rabbits coming off that heartbreaker against the Sharks last week, while the Warriors. Put up an effort against the Storm, but not quite good enough. Rabbits, huge, minus 17.5 favourites here. Overs, 45.5. Big outs for the Rabbits are, are Tom Burgess and Cody Nicarima. Chanel, Harris Tavita and Jazz Tavanga missing for the Warriors. Two big names there for the Warriors. Who I, I think they're going to struggle uh, big here. Henry. Yeah. Yeah, well, the South lost in a nail bite last week. Uh, something tells me they're ready to go whack uh, the Rabbitohs. So the line's 17 and a half. I'm happy to take the Rabbitohs to, to cover that. Uh, this one's got Johnson two or more written all over it, I reckon, $2.30 uh, for that. If you want to try a score from the Warriors, Edward Cossey, uh, he got he got a couple last week. Three, I think, he? He three, got three last week, three yeah. Three tries. A couple of try so celebrations $2. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $2.55 to, to get a little consolation one perhaps, but I think the Rabbitohs should do it pretty easily, to be honest. Yeah, it's going to be a nice sunny track. I thought this was in, in Sydney, but it's up at uh, the sunny coast. So I think it's going to be a nice and sunny uh, hot track for the uh, AJ and Trell, Trell show up there. I think they're going, to, they're going to put on a little bit of show. I'm with you. I see this going one way, and that's South. Um, have you ever seen a try scorer shorter in price than Alex Johnson this week? He's paying $1.28. That is insane. No. It's re- remarkable behaviour, but deservedly so. I think, yes. as I said, he gets two in this one. So, yeah, he's on about twenty-two after eighteen games or something. It's um unbelievable aiming for that that record. I've got um, AJ two plus into Latrell Mitchell to score. And it's an even ten dollars. So for me, that's my play of the game. Um, I'm not going to worry about the the result. I'm just going to take that. I, I rabbits win win well, but seven and yep. a half. You know, just just too much at the line. Uh, I will just take a couple of try scorers and get a bit of value there. Lovely. Now, an interesting matchup as we head down to Canberra for the Raiders v Panthers, where you'll find the Panthers with a little bit of value here. Panthers minus two and a half, overs 40 and a half. Now, obviously massive out for the Panthers is Cleary. He's going to miss the next five games, joining uh, Luai, who is out with injury. Uh, Stephen Crichton back after his horrific ear injury. Rapana is also back for the Raiders with... Chance Nickel Klukstar out for this one. How do you think this one plays out, Hemi? I reckon the Raiders could upset the Panthers here uh, without both of their halves, to be honest with you. Uh, I think they're going to do it a little bit tougher over the next few weeks, the Panthers as well. So I'm actually looking at Canberra 1 to 12 here, which will get you $3.50. Uh, they conceded a double to Sebo last week, the Panthers. Kotrick also got a double. Not sure he gets two, but I like him to get one at $2.25. So. Raiders one to twelve in a tight one, and Kotrick to get one. That's that's where I'm playing. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on the Raiders train here. I think they can cause the upset. I think the next five weeks are going to be tough for the Panthers, especially if they do give this one up uh, heading into the finals. If they, you know, 
uh, on the last six games, if they go three and th- three and three or two and four, it's not going to be a great momentum into the finals. They lose this one, the, the talk's just going to continue to to mount up for them as well. I I, I feel that they're still going to take the minor premiership and will be will be fine once they get uh, Cleary and Luai back. But just be interesting. This will be a huge game for them on Saturday. I'm also looking at a Raiders one to twelve. I had that written down. Three fifty looks good to me. Uh, eight wins in the last eleven, and they've had wins against South Shark Storm Roosters in that. All top eight, riding a wave of momentum here at home. Huge crowd at Canberra. They love the Saturday afternoon 5.30 game, so they're going to have them behind them. I had uh, Rapana. He's got 10 tries from 13 games against the Panthers, 2.25. He makes his comeback this week, so I'll back him. Hudson Young, the stud, his filthy flick pass on the weekend, plus a try of his own. He's a sneaky chance to do it again at 4.60, so I don't mind that. Uh, but this this game has a bit of a game of the week feel for me. I am really looking forward to this on Saturday. Yeah, there's a couple of good ones this week. This one yeah. probably that uh, the Eels Manly one and the, the Thursday game the, the Roosters Broncos. Yeah, the absolute rippers. You'd Absolutely. almost be looking at try try bets in each of them to be honest. But that is one to twelve. It'd be interesting actually to see like if you took each game this week. Oh, I know there'll probably be a few buyouts. You wouldn't take Melbourne more than likely, uh, all the rabbits. But there's a few ones there that you could, yeah, play that try bet and, and come out on top. Mate, we're happy to, happy to uh, skip the next one if you want. It's only Sharks, Dragons, uh-huh. so nothing nothing special. I'll drive if let's, you want. Yeah, yeah, let's just spend 30 seconds on it. Uh, real quick, uh, Sharks minus 9.5, overs 41.5. Yeah. Go for it. Sharks cover that line. They win it <laughs> easily, I reckon. Uh, okay, sorry. next game. <laughs> yep. Uh, no. <laughs> Now we got we got Dykes. We got another Dykes rolling out for the Sharks uh, at fullback, which is very exciting. How about this? Uh, so I don't know if you were going to mention it, but the third generation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so we've had. I know Max King is a third generation uh, player, but he, he his father and grandfather played for different teams. He um, Dykes is. We had the first one to play for the same team in Zach Fulton last week. His father Scott, I think, and, and Bob grandfather played for Manly so the first player to debut for the uh, a club that his father and grandfather played for first time in, in 114 years and now we have it twice in two weeks unbelievable remarkable yeah well look I, I actually reckon he he can start with a try here the Dragons let Scotty drink water over twice last week so yep. I'm going to take the fullback on debut at $2.50 and uh and the Sharks to cover can I just ask did you, did you steal my notes before or I did not. On. Okay. So I've we're got just in sync now, Rosie. Round, round 21, we're in sync now. We are. We're, we're, we're starting to find form, real good form. I am huge. I'm on Kate Docks as well. Look, I don't know. My Dragons, I write them off. They win. I back them. They lose. I just can't win. So I'm going to write them off this week, and so which means back them, really. <laughs> um, but <laughs> if they don't break my heart, they'll break my bank balance. Um, but for me, yeah, Sharks take that one. Take this one. Minus nine and a half. Pretty confident of that. They, they are really, really hot right now. So hot right so now. So hot right now, Rusty. Uh, but yeah, Kay Dykes. So uh, four straight losses for the Dragons against the Sharks. I'll cover the nine and a half and I'll jump on Kay Dykes. 250. I wonder what he's paying for. I'll have a quick look. I reckon even two. Two? Um, yeah, I don't know. Just, you know, like you he, he said, uh, Scotty Drinkwater on debut. That they'll look to sort of, you know, throw in the ball a lot more. Two more. Where is he? K Dykes, nine seventy five. Look, it's worth a two dollar Uh But yeah, $2. so let's get off that one anyway because I don't think All the right. Dragons can get that one. Leads us yep. into uh, the Sunday Saviors. Now, hopefully, you're not in a hole from our tips come Sunday. But if you are, this is the day we get out of it. The Sunday Saviors, starting with. Dogs v Cowboys. Cowboys minus nine and a half here. Coming up against the Doggies team playing some real vigor lately. Four wins from their last six. Cowboys, yes. however, just two losses in their last 14 matches. They are making a major claim this year, giving it to everyone, including myself, who had them for the spoon. So I'll there you go. my words. I'll uh, own up to it again. Uh, overs 44 yep. and a half here. I'll let you uh, take the lead here, mate. How do you want to play it? Well, look, I thought I might go the Cowboys 1 to 12 here. The Dogs, they're really such an improved team. Now, they haven't actually lost by more than 12 points since round seven this year. Yep. M- much improved since round seven. Cowboys are too good. Uh, but I, I think I think the Dogs are good enough to keep it respectable. The line's nine and a half, but 
I think Cowboys one to twelve is my bet. Uh, Jeremiah and I anytime getting about two bucks there, so that's what I reckon. I was nearly going to take the dogs head to head here. I thought they could cause an upset until I found out the game's not actually played. That they're the home team, but the the game's actually played up in Bundaberg, up in Queensland. Ooh. Yeah, so I thought Sunday Ovo in Sydney was a good day for the doggies, but uh, not up in Queensland. Um, how good was the Fox last week too? Just quietly outstanding. Very good. When he's not scoring tries, he's setting them up like a like a halfback. Um, I really like the the doggy style. This uh, the way they've been playing lately. Notice someone. Uh, I think it was one of the Bulldogs fan pages put up. Matty Burton had scored sixteen points after ten rounds, or eighteen put sixteen to eighteen points after ten rounds. In the last ten rounds, he's he scored 90-plus points, so he's, he's covered oh. the 100-point mark. He's the first doggy to do it in the last eight years to score wow. over 100 points, uh, and he's he's scored the majority of them in the last 10 rounds. So they are on, they're playing a way different brand of footy. It was very exciting, very good to watch, good style. But, yeah, just not sure about this one. I'm going to take the dogs uh, – sorry, the Cowboys to cover the nine-and-a-half here, uh, and I'm going to hammer in um, – the hammer's in for Felt. I'm going to hammer him. Uh, two plus tries for me at 490 Ooh, is the way I'm going to play lovely. that one. Yeah. But this is, I think it's going to be an exciting game, actually. A good one to watch. Should be good, yeah. And the Sunday other game to end the week. What a blockbuster this one will be. Cancel your plans on Sunday. Uh, if you've got a hot date, reschedule. Want to wash the car, yep. leave it for another Move day. That. You do not yep. want to miss this one. 14th versus 15th. Tigers v. the Knights. Uh, Tigers minus four and a half favorites. Overs 42 and a half. Um, Tom Freeband to make his debut with uh, David Clemmer. He's been stood down for what I believe he yelled at a trainer. Crazy. Um, but he's been Good given a show cause for some on-field incident last week. So crazy. Uh, but that is the Knights, really. Bradman Best makes his return. He's always good for a try scorer. Uh, I don't know. This could be a try scorer's delight, Hemi. Uh, Knights, the worst defensive team. Tigers, the fourth worst. But... I will note yep. that they're both in the top two for the worst attacking side. So do we just pick try scorers here all day and just call it a day? Or no, have you got something, got something else, Ham? To quote Fisher, it's a filler, this one. The line's four and a half. The Tigers cover that. Thanks very much. <clears throat> so good against the Broncos last week. Dewey on fire. Uh, $2.90 to score one. I think – sorry, mate. I'm really battling here with the congestion. But – Hammy's running 5-8 against a spud team theorem. He's in full effect here. Dewey to get one. $2.90. Like yep. uh, Dom Young, he keeps finding a way, even though the, the Knights are, are no good. $2 you're getting for him, but I think I think the, the Tigers can win this comfortably. And if they do, uh, you dare say the Titans probably win the spoon. They're $1.70 now. If yep. the Tigers win this game, they'll come right in, I would have thought. We um we spoke about the the knights for the spoon at the start of the year. They were one of the most back teams. They, they were the, the most back team. I think they were like at seventeen dollars at the start of the year. And yeah, if they lose this, they'll be uh, two points off it. So interesting. I do I, as well like the Tigers minus four and a half. They will miss Hastings uh, pretty bad, but I think they'll they'll get the four, the the win and by four and a half. I think they cover that. I got a four leg same game multi here because I think it is a few try scorers. I'm gonna go uh, Ken Mamalo. Uh, Brent Naden, who you tipped last week as well. He scored yes, he scored one. Going very nicely. Dom Young and Bradman Best. And those four will get you 19 bucks. Nice little Sunday. Watch a few try scorers. I'm going to have a stewie on that. And that'll uh, wrap up my weekend. Well played. Zingerbox Multi. Now, like I said, um, you ruined this last week with uh, going the way early, Crow. But Look, I'm going to do what I want. I, I won. The first time around, so yeah, true. I'm still king of the castle, really. Actually, I'll put up um, that you should be called the Colonel. I should uh, be called the Colonel. And like it. got a little bit of love, but we'll we'll see how we go this week. If you win Colonel this week, if you win this week, you, you're now the Colonel. My okay. Zingerbox Multi. Now, if you don't know Zingerbox Multi, you get the the burger, three wicked wings, a few other little extras. But we're going to focus on the main meat of the Zingerbox, which is the burger and the three wings. Pick a burger, a, uh, a forward. And three wicked wings uh, being your wingers. Now, my wingers this week, my wicked wings, David Nofaluma, I think he scores easy. Oh, yeah. AJ, very short. And Ronaldo Mulatalo to score. They're my three wicked wings. The burger, I'm going Isaiah Papali'i for the Eels, and that's going to get me 11.94. Oh, you've got me covered price-wise. I've got a few familiar faces in my zinger box. 
Uh, Alex Johnson, very short, but I've got to throw him in against the Warriors. <clears throat> Nick Kotrick yep. against the Panthers. Bit of value there, $2.30. Uh, Mike Acevo, uh for the Eels there. Uh, who are they playing again? Manly. Manly. At $1.90. Oh. And, then, and then Jeremiah Nanai, two bucks to round it out uh, against the Bulldogs. That'll get you $11, uh, gamble responsibly. 100%. Uh, you've got Nanai three weeks in a row. It's good for you. I have. And he hasn't He's, let me down. He hasn't. So you got to stick with the winning formula. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to finish off just a little bit of a special multi here, Hemi. I've had a, uh, yep. a sick kid here at home all week, uh, and all she eats when she's sick is uh, toasted cheese sangers. It was Beautiful. a sta- staple for me growing up, and I sort of went away from them, but found my love again with them, uh, eating them with her. Now, for some reason, I stumbled across doing research on sandwiches for some unbeknownst reason. Um, I came across a Reuben sandwich. Now, I had one of these yep. when I was over in the USA a few years ago. Very tasty. Uh, if you don't know, it's a, a bread, corn, beef, cheese, sauerkraut, uh, toasted up. It's very good. Now, I'm going to mix it up by adding the Reuben name with the cheese toasty. This is how I'm going to play it. So you need two slices of bread and some uh, a filling. One slice of bread is Reuben Garrick, sticking with the name, Reuben Sandwich. Love it. Gun fullback. Classic. Another piece of bread is going to be Reuben Cotter, who makes his comeback. He Ooh, made yeah. his comeback last week. Uh, playing again this week off the bread, so he's uh, off the bench. He's the other slice of bread, and then the filling. I'm just going to stick with cheese, cheese toasty. Fire. And uh, Brendan Smith makes his comeback. Well, that's the, good. The Reuben sandwich, the Reuben toasty, the roasted Reuben. I don't know. I'll come up with a better name than that. But that's paying uh-huh. twenty seven ninety four now. Oh yeah. Don't uh, you know? Don't go all out. Little Stewie, two dollars dollar. Gamble responsibly. Even just watch it. Just, just watch it and enjoy. Go cook yourself a sandwich while you're watching. Enjoy it over these sandwich. games, hundred percent. That's my Reuben, Love it, Reuben sandwich, roasted Reuben. Very good. Two Reubens and a slice of cheese. Thank you very much. That's going to end the week. Yeah, perfect. Chef's kiss. kiss. Yeah. But yes, um, enjoy your football, footy fans. Hemi, um, hope you get better. Thank you, Rusty. I know it's just a, Thanks, bit, of man, a bit of man. Flu. I'm drowning here. I'm drowning. I'm going to go blow this nose. I'm no good. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to do see that. The, we don't I, want to hear it. So let's just uh, nah, end, let's just end it. I do it for I do it for the listeners. So hopefully, although I sounded like shit, hopefully my tips aren't shit this week. So gamble responsibly. Good luck and uh, Rosie. I'll chat to you uh, over the course of the weekend. I'm sure. Enjoy all that Reuben sandwich. All the hairy chest, mate. Punters, gamble responsibly. Talk next week. Peace out.